Dear brothers and sisters, today we will be looking at the seventh commandment, you shall not commit adultery. Adultery is defined as a sexual relationship between a man and a woman who are not married to each other. Historically, even in South Korea, such actions were regarded as a significant violation of ethical standards. Most, most regarded that as a very grave sin, and if someone was found guilty of such an offense, they became too ashamed to lift up their head in public. Some of them even face ostracism from their community. But as, th but as time passes on, it appears that people's con conscience become dull and their sense of guilt diminishes. The widespread use of technology and the development of the inter Internet have made it easy for the adults, along with younger school-aged children, to be exposed to inappropriate content easily. As they are easily exposed to inappropriate influences and absorb them through eyes, ears, and feelings, they quickly allow their hearts to be stained by worldly lusts and commit sins in action more often. According to the news reports, even elementary schools um, commit s sexual crimes. I think you've heard that. Well, things are getting... Younger and younger people are committing such sins. It's not just about a social issue, but it's a. Uh, this is the how the world is like. We have to be stay on alert. Even though the world is dark, we shouldn't be swayed by the darkness, influenced by darkness. If things get darker and darker, we don't even feel that it is dark. People may hate bright light. We should never. Be like that. Even amid the prevalence of sin, God's children must walk in the light. By the way, the seventh commandment, you shall not commit adultery. Not only, I mean, uh, Romans chapter 13, verse 12 says, The night is almost gone and the day is near. Therefore, lay aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Even amid the prevalence of sin, God's children must walk in the light. We shouldn't think, this is not a big deal, this is not even considered a sin uh, in the world. But we have to send, have our standards in the Word of God. By the way, the seventh commandment, you shall not commit adultery, not only prohibits physical acts, but also carries profound spiritual significance. Through today's message, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you are fully appalled, fully appalled God's commandments and keep both your heart and actions holy and pure so that you may be worthy of becoming the Lord's prize. Dear brothers and sisters, as previously explained, the seventh commandment, you shall not commit adultery, carries multiple meanings. First, it prohibits the general act of adultery, specifically adultery committed through actions. Adultery committed through action is a typical deed of the flesh, and the Bible clearly states that it will lead to a loss of salvation. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 and 10 says, Or do you not know that or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornications, fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor, inf nor homosexuals, nor thieves, nor the covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. God can grant new believers who may not yet understand the truth opportunities for repentance. But once those who've entered the third level of faith and know the truth enough engage in such blatant deeds of the flesh, it's difficult for them to receive a spirit of repentance. So, receiving the blessing of repentance requires them to thoroughly repent, fast, and desperately hang on to God. Also, receiving forgiveness requires them to completely cast off, adul cast off adultery. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 20, uh, 32 tells us, The one who commits adultery with a woman is lacking sense. He who would destroy himself does it. 
Leviticus chapter 20 verse 10 also warns, If there is a man who commits adultery with another man's wife, one who commits adultery with his friend's wife, the adulterer and the adulteress shall surely be put to death. It's important to remember that the Bible strictly prohibits not only sexual acts between unmarried individuals, but also offenses involving animals or same-sex relationships. Today, people's perceptions have shifted with TV series and movies often, often depicting unethical adultery as beautiful. So, it's important to discern everything through the lens of God's Word. Some may think that sexual relations between unmarried individuals are acceptable if they intend to marry in the future. But it's important to recognize that God prohibits such behaviors not only in the past or during Old Testament times. In the New Testament, God prohibits such fleshly acts even more strictly. In the name of the Lord, I urge you all, I urge you all to prevent yourselves from defiling, defiling yourselves, being swayed by worldly influences. So, people who grew up in Ma Min, and when young adults marry, get married in Ma Min, and they confess, they, they, when they, when they try to get uh, close or wedding close, and they have to visit a shop, and they're before they are get married, so they, they because they they come on a different vehicle, and so as I heard that, I was very proud of them. They wanted to keep their hearts. They try to keep their uh, guard themselves. So after they get married, they can live in tremendous God's grace. So. They are also complimented by people around. But worldly people, when we talk about this before worldly people, they will think of it as weird and they may not understand it. But you, you know the word, you've, and you try to keep yourself pure and holy, so you receive God's uh, great grace. And even though the world is uh, uh, dark, we should not lose our senses. Also, because the word is strict, strict, you should not ig ignore the word. You should not think that you have to go to another church and live a comfortable Christian life. Then would God consider you not sinful? You know the word, and because you reject the word and you don't want to live by the word, that that doesn't mean you can. It, you know, it is a blessing to know the word and protect you. Even if you fail to protect yourself, you can thoroughly repent and you can show these pleasing to God and break down the wall of sin and walk down the path of blessing. But you should not say, the word of God is harassing me, word of God is binding me. But instead, you have to discipline yourself with the word and as wise Christians, as wise God's children. Second, there is adultery in the heart. Jesus said, You have heard that it was said, You shall not commit adultery, but I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lust for the but I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. The teaching emphasizes that merely looking at a woman with lust constitutes committing adultery in the heart. Committing a sin in action is preceded by harboring a sin in the heart, as such, as such is the case for all deeds of the flesh. <clears throat> Hatred in the heart leads to causing them, causing harm to others, while anger in the heart results in getting angry and using inappropriate language. Similarly, harboring lust in the heart can lead to physical adultery. So, if only you harbor sin in the heart, you are already committing adultery even if it hasn't been committed in action. Even if you haven't sinned in action, once you harbor lust in the heart, once you harbor lust in the heart, that's supposed to be holy, that can't be hidden from God who watches all things. Though you pretend to be holy outwardly, if you harbor lust in the heart, 
and see, hear, and think about lustful things, how could you be recognized as His holy children by God? Some may claim that one cannot cast off sensual desire in the heart, but only strive against it. But such views are not aligned with God's will. Not aligned with God's will. Human effort alone is not enough, but through prayer, fasting, and God's power, even sinful natures in the heart can be cast off. Our Jesus wore a crown of thorns, and sh- so, whatever is important to what kind of standards we have, it, inf- it affects our Christian life, and it affects our dwelling places in heaven. It makes a such great difference. Just trying to cast off sin, Uh, some people say we, we, we can only try we cannot cast up sinful natures as human beings if pastors teach like that his members would think that I can it's okay to continue to commit sins and they as they repeatedly commit sins as they fall into the swamp of sin they don't even the, feel sense of guilt and they think that because they are attending a church they are saved Does this mean they are saved? Because if they are in a deep swamp of sins, they cannot be saved. It's like the blind guiding other blind into people who cannot... They just uh, live comfortably as they please, and they just live as they please, and they may not... They end up not being saved. Even though some Christians... Even though they know they have to cast off sins, but they don't know the way how to cast off sins. They, some people, pray. They cry out, and, and there are Christians who cry out and fast, but they don't pray. But, but. But they are not. They haven't learned about casting up sins, and they don't think it is a sin to hate someone in hatred. They don't think it is a sin to have lust for women, like having such a sensual desire, having such adulterous mind. You know, the Bible calls it adultery, but because they are not taught that way, and they just think it is not. So, they don't feel guilty even if they have such lust and sensual desires. So, even if they pray and fast, how can they be receive true blessings? And But the gospel of holiness is such a high-level uh, gospel. It could be difficult because it strictly warns against sins and it strictly and strongly urges us to cast off sins. Casting off sins is not an easy job. It's not done effortlessly. As we heard from the lectures on Job, there are many sinful natures. Once you don't, because Job didn't realize them, he was going through trials. It's the same for us. There are many sinful natures that we don't even realize. We have like resentment, judgment, condemnation. But people don't think of them as sinful. People People just spend time not regarding such things as sins, but the Holy Gospel of Holiness points it out and enlightens us on such things. Even though it may, we may feel burdened, we may feel uh, burdensome, we may feel painful, but we have to go this way so we can resemble the image of God and end up in the good dwelling places in heaven. If we have obedient obedient attitude, when we realize about our sins, we feel joyful rather than feeling uh, burdened. But just acknowledging our sinful nature is not everything. We have to make continued efforts and comp- discipline our bodies and put ourselves to death. We need such efforts, hard efforts, but we are we have to resemble the recovered image recovered image. this is our goal to reach you know our goal is not just receiving salvation we but we were not were, weren't against sins and evil so many people left people considered our messages to be burdensome or hard and difficult they wanted to seek a comfortable Christian life and they 
just compare their lives to yours just compare their lives to look at their lives in the light of God's word are they living in the word of God we have to know that we are learning the words of truth and learning about the profound God's will it is a blessing our Jesus wore a crown of thorns and shed his precious blood to forgive our sins of the heart and mind he also sent us the Holy Spirit to help us remove even sinful natures in our heart once the sinful natures are rooted out thoughts of untruth do not even arise do not even arise so even if so even if we happen to see and hear bad things since our feelings are not incited what is not truth doesn't even come to mind Of course, in the process of letting go of them, it may seem that the sinful natures which you think having cast off, we surface again and again. But those who truly believe in and obey God's word and desire to cast off sins and evil will not stay stagnant. As you peel an onion, at first, you see one layer after another. But as you carry on, there's nothing left inside. The same applies to sinful natures. When you look through the eyes of faith, you won't become discouraged by the thought of having tried hard but still being unable to overcome sins. Striving to let go of sins and evil leads to a firm belief in spiritual transformation. Hoping for complete sanctification, you can be motivated to try even harder. It's not, that sinful, it's not that sinful attributes remain the same even after being cast off. It's also not true that evil attributes generate out of the blue. You finally discover the attributes that you haven't recognized. As this process brings you closer to perfection, you should rather offer more gratitude. While you are trying to cast it off, even if thoughts of adultery intrude momentarily, God does not condemn you. God does not condemn you. Problems arise. Problems arise when you continually accept and develop those thoughts. If you repent right after discovering such thoughts and continue your efforts for perfect sanctification, you invite greater grace and strength from God. So, he helps you achieve spiritual victory in the end. You come to Daniel Primity and you try to cast off adulterous mind. You try to remove such adulterous minds and you praise in tears and prayed and you prayed with fullness of the Spirit and you feel comfortable and you feel like those adultery has been cast off. The, um, I'm talking about the... Um, you feel like when you pray you pray with tears and in earnestness and you feel like the adultery is gone and you will not hate anymore you will not have adulterous mind anymore and you feel like you are able to protect yourself but when you go back home you you go back to your old habits you want to see um, sexual content you want to see watch you want to as you see some nice looking woman your heart is um, stirred up and you have to stop there and you have to try hard to stop there but if you what, what about those who are watching uh, pornography you have to remove pornography delete them you have to remove such things from your heart you have to guard your heart from those things against those things So you should avoid the stupidity of uh, remaining in those sins. So you, that's why you need efforts. You may say, because I pray, doesn't God help me? Of course God helps you, but you also have to make efforts. Even if someone... Uh, but it takes time because you stayed in that old habit for a long time. You repeatedly committed sin and you repeatedly committed sin and repented and accepted adultery. So... you become addicted to such sinful natures. So that's why you need more and more efforts. And then, but Father God has mercy on us and helps us. But just praying with the fullness of the Spirit once doesn't mean everything is over. You should not be discouraged. 
You not stay the same. You have to gradually change yourself. As you change yourself gradually, and if you don't control yourself, if you just, um, you know, but you, if you don't, but you have to continue your efforts uh, praying with tears, and you have to, when, whenever adultery is stirred up in your heart, you have to discipline your body and try hard. Even though, then, even though it is not cast off completely, God would not condemn you. But until you completely cast it off, you have to try harder and harder, and, and then you achieve a spiritual victory in the end. Third, there is spiritual adultery. The adultery committed, the adultery committed through action and in the heart, which we just discussed, is adultery in a physical sense. But spiritual adultery is even more serious as it involves loving the world more than God whilst claiming to believe in Him. Physical adultery also stands from a heart by which one does not fully love God and instead loves worldly lusts more. Colossians chapter 3 verses 5 and 6 tell us, Therefore, consider the members of your earthly body as the as deed to immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and greed, which amounts to idolatry. For it is because of these things that the wrath of God will come upon the sons of disobedience. Even with the Holy Spirit and, these, and the experiences of God's work, a person will end up loving worldly things more than God if his greed isn't dealt with. As mentioned with the second commandment, loving the world more than God is spiritual idolatry. So greed leads to spiritual idolatry. And then this results in spiritual, idolat spiritual adultery. Then how do the idolatry in the second commandment and the spiritual adultery in the seventh commandment differ? In terms of the commandment, spiritual idolatry is anything loved more than God. Physical idolatry involves people who don't know God at all, creating physical representations to worship, while spiritual idolatry occurs when believers with weak faith love worldly things more than God. New believers may fail to let go of the world and love Him more than God. As they doubt if God is really alive, if hell exists, or if the resurrection is real, it's not easy to give up the world and live in the world. They, are, they have questions. They, they don't... God... How could God exist without parents? Uh, it doesn't make sense. I cannot believe it. As they have, novice believers, novice believers have such doubts. It's not easy to give up the world and live in the world. Uh, it's not to give up. Uh, It's not easy to give up the world and live in the Word of God. This can result in their serving spiritual idols, prioritizing money, fame, or family over God. But as you listen to the Word and pray, you experience God's answers and believe in your heart that the Bible is true and heaven and hell are real. You realize that you should love God above all else and try to do so. Despite having such faith, if you continue to love the world more than God, I mean, You gradually grow in faith, and you have firm faith, and God gives you grace. Even even if you have, even after you have definite faith, uh, if you continue to love the world more than God and engage in the things of the darkness, this means rejecting God's love you have received and committing spiritual adultery. While spiritual idolatry and spiritual adultery may seem similar, they technically have differences. Novice believers, um, when they don't know God well, they don't realize the truth. Um, they are, I mean, people who have enough faith, if they still don't cut the world, cut off the world, and love the world, and love anything more than God, This is spiritual uh, adultery. 
이스라엘 백성들과 하나님의 관계를 The, the Bible portrays the relationship between God and His people as a husband and wife relationship as well as a father-child bond. It's like a relationship between a man and a woman who have vowed to love each other wholeheartedly. Throughout Israel's history, the people often broke their covenant with God and worshipped foreign gods. While Gentiles created idols out of ignorance, The Israelites knew God so well. God chose them, led the Israelites to the land flowing with milk and honey, and showed them many signs and wonders, demonstrating His existence. Yet over time, the people succumbed to their desires, accepting the idols of the Gentiles and loving them more than God. If you look at the book of the Judges, the Israelites were, we find them so foolish. As we read the Bible carefully, we realize that. Why? In the book of Judges, the Israelites continue to leave God, worship uh, idols, repeatedly worship idols, and then suffer troubles. And then, because they know how how God brought the Israelites out of Egypt, how God allowed them to live in peace, how God worked through Moses, how God gave the Ten Commandments, and how, and they know how God detests idols. Even though they worship idols, and they are in trouble, and then they surrender to God and repent before Him, and then the God of love has mercy on them and send them a judge to resolve their troubles, This repeats itself in the book of Judges. You may think, because they are, um, it's better for them not to repeat the same mistakes, but they repeatedly to, to com commit the same mistake. This is the, you know, people, when they receive a resolution of the problem, they live in comfort and peace, and they resolve to live out a word, but... By the way, after a passing of time, uh, fleshly attributes are stirred up and they become lazy and they stop praying and they take worldly things again and then at some point they find themselves in trouble. This is, uh, this is our story. This, the, the people in the judges are, are like us. We have to examine. This is the spiritual adultery. First Chronicles chapter 5 verse 25 says, But they acted treacherously against the God of their fathers and played a harlot after the gods of the peoples of the land whom God had destroyed before them. It highlights that the idolatry of the Israelites was spiritual idolatry. Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 8 also tells us, And I saw that for all the adulteries of faithless Israel, I had sent her away and given her a writ of divorce, yet her treacherous sister Judah did not fear, but she went and was a hallowed also. The northern kingdom of Israel engaged in spiritual idol adultery by worshipping idols. In turn, they faced God's rejection and destruction. But despite witnessing this, the southern kingdom of Judah did not repent and continued to worship idols. By committing the sin of adultery, Israel brought upon itself God's wrath and faced destruction at the hands of the Gentiles. Today, in the New Testament time as well, God's children are considered the brides of Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 2 records, For I am jealous for you with a godly jealousy, for I betrothed you to one husband, so that to Christ I might present you as a pure virgin. The verse means that Paul taught and guided believers to prepare themselves as pure brides for the bridegroom, the Lord. But if you believe in the Lord, have received the Holy Spirit, and call the Lord your bridegroom, but still love the world and compromise with untruth, this is spiritual adultery.
James chapter 4 verse 4 warns about this. You adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is hostility toward God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. It is impossible for a person who acts in hostility towards God, betrays the Lord, and commits adultery to partake in the wedding feast, nor be called the Lord's bride. This is why spiritual adultery is a far graver sin than physical adultery. For example, if you curse and spit at your older brother, though it is a big fault, there is room for your brother for... But still, there is a room for your brother to forgive you if you regret your actions. But if you do the same against your father, this would be a grave discourtesy and difficult to be forgiven. and difficult to be forgiven. Uh, even physical adultery between people is difficult to be forgiven, but betraying God and the Lord through spiritual adultery is an even greater offense. So, in Jeremiah chapter 11, verse 11 through 14, God told the prophet not to pray for the spiritually adulterous Israel, stating that even if they cried out to Him, He would not listen. Similarly, in your life of faith, if your spiritual adultery exceeds the limits, you will not be able to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit, nor have your prayers answered. This distance from God causes greater worldly influence and leads to sins leading to death, including physical adultery. You may say, I'm attending church, I'm carrying out my duties, I'm... I'm... sword earnestly. Some people commit spiritual adultery through money or through their pride or and, and living, not living by the word of God itself. I, I'm not talking about novice believers. I'm talking about people who have enough faith. But they, but they still live in sins and refuse to cast up sins and live in sins and evil. While they live and commit any sins, they give a lot of excuse. Oh, this is not, this is okay, acceptable. And this is clearly spiritual adultery. If they repeat living like that, they cannot communicate with God. Instead, the uh, enemy devil will consume them, overcome them, and they will, will be controlled by, and they ha have their hearts taken away by the enemy devil. And they, uh, even though they think about truth, they are consumed by, Uh, they are controlled by the enemy devil. This is a terrifying thing. You have to know that. So you have to be stay on alert always. This distance from God causes greater worldly influence and leads to sins leading to death, including physical adultery. As mentioned in Hebrews 6 and 10, you crucify Jesus Christ all over again and end up on a path towards death. In the, uh, in the lectures on Job, uh, I, we, uh, we talked about the sins of a person's conscience being seared as with hot iron, and people didn't realize it, even if the Holy Spirit has left them. And we talked about the such cases uh, in the last session of the Job's lecture. And also, as you commit spiritual adultery, as you live in sins and evil, and you don't even feel guilty about, have a sense of guilt about uh, committing sins, and you repeatedly do the sinful acts, and if you are living like that, even, even as a teacher of the God's Word, and you think that it is okay uh, giving excuses, and you uh, distort the Word of God, and then you badly affect even our other church members, and then you are not uh, being moved by Holy Spirit, and then the Satan seizes control over you, and even as a head, even as a... That's why the teachers of the God's Word are judged more strictly, and, and in heaven, they, are, they face greater judgment. When someone are deceived, when someone lives in sins, we may think, oh, why are living like that? And we are heartbroken because of them. But 
if we understand them in the light of God's word, we can have all answers. Even if we receive the God's tremendous gift, if you commit sins willfully, if you commit sins giving excuses, if you um, distort the God's word in your own ways, this is not acceptable. And you just uh, live a seek a comfortable Christian life and teach others that way, and then the Holy Spirit uh, already rejects. Uh, dislikes you and you are controlled by the enemy devil so pastors have to be stay on alert and also when church members are being taught they have to discern things in the uh, with the word of God and so you in doing so you can prevent yourself from s- spiritual committing spiritual adultery always Dear brothers and sisters, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 3, verses 16 and 17 says, Do you not know that you are a temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If any man destroys the temple of God, God will destroy him, for the temple of God is holy, and that, and that is what you are. The bodies of the redeemed children of God are described as holy temples. It's important that we become qualified both in deed and heart, so we won't be ashamed as temples. Moreover, living a life of faith at the church, we've witnessed countless works of God. We've also learned much about His heart and will, salvation, and the need for sanctification. So, we must never forsake God's will. I urge you to seek only the truth in your heart, being free from both physical and spiritual adultery so that you can present yourselves as the perfect bride of the Lord. I pray in our Lord's name that as an unblemished bride of the Lamb, you will adorn yourselves as beautifully as you can and joyfully attend the wedding feast. Let's reflect on today's message in our prayer. Let's pray for the prayer for the sick. If you have a sick part, lay your hands on your sick part. If you don't have a Father God of goodness, thank you for giving us the words of wisdom and letting us, uh, you told us to walk the narrow path. We have to walk the narrow and path, but this is the way of life. Our Lord is waiting for us with His arms wide open. We have to obey. So please give more of your grace unto us. Please lay your hands on all mommy members who are receiving this prayer. Please lay your hands on all their uh, heads and uh, from head to toe. Um, please scorch them with the fire of the Holy Spirit and please work with your great power and lay your hands on the uh, scorch them, scorch all the diseases and germs and viruses. I pr- command in the name of Jesus Christ, all diseases and infirmities uh, go away and be driven away. Be scorched by the Father of the Holy Spirit and be perfect. And whatever infirmities or difficult diseases they may have, whatever uh, p- difficult uh, diseases they may have, please let it be scorched by the Father of the Holy Spirit. Whatever lumps or all cancers, cells, uh, all diseases be scorched and be cleansed perfect. Please give them more strength and strengthen them. All their tissues and nerves and cells, please scorch them with the fire of the Holy Spirit. Let them walk and leap. Let them be strengthened. Let them become the light in the world and let them testify you. Please help our students carry out their duties well. They give them wisdom and understanding. Let them be sanct- uh, dis- set apart from the world. Please protect all our m e m b e r s and please give them 
uh, peace and joy during the week. Let them help them pray more fervently during the week. Give them more grace and strength to do so. Please let them accept the word of God with joy and strengthen them to live by your word. Thank you. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.